Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. <laughs> Accurate. Hey guys, Zach Mars here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Yeah, been a while since I played this. Um, so yeah, in the last episode we tried to save Edgeworth from being thrown in jail, and we wound up against his old master Von Karma, who wouldn't really let us get a word in Edgewise. But then we found a found out that the man in the photo was left-handed, yet. Edgeworth was found holding it with his right hand, which means that Edgeworth might be innocent, and we're now going to go find out who actually did it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Von Karma it was a bit of a dick. Uh, <laughs> Detention center visitors room. Maya. Oh, that's right. She got that. She also got um held in contempt of court because, again, Von Karma's a dick. Hey, Nick, you won. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Uh, okay. Um, this guard's monitors in the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch since I came in. A real pro. Um, what do you got? Question it. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was just was here just now. He said, seeing as this is your first assignment, we'll let you go after questioning. Woo. Oh, and he wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? Uh, how are you doing? Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really tried. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. Aw. Um. Well, we also need to figure out... Yeah, left... Yeah, he was left-handed, yet Regworth had it in his right hand. Um. Where do we go from here? Right and go, I guess. Up, oh, there's the... There's a the thing. Sure it's quiet here with nobody around. Right. I have to get my out of the detention cell soon. My brought it in a poster of the Steel Samurai the other day. We had a big fight over whether to put it up or not. I know she's just waiting for a chance to sneak it up on the wall. His favorite plan. His name is Charlie. Mine's gotten the knack of wandering it lately. Charlie's been perking up, been perking up these days. Looks like it's cleaning day again at the hotel across the way. I know they're playing a second branch outside the city. I can see the bell while getting the angle that the screw of that screwdriver in the drawer just right. Hmm. Mia's desk. If we had more clients, I would probably sit here more often. Lately, I've been spending more time on the couch watching TV. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, you guys really don't get to make clients. Difficult looking legal books stand in the form. Formidable row. They mock me. Try re I tried reading one and it made my head hurt. When I closed it, it slipped out of my hand. Then my foot hurt too. <laughs> Ugly dokly then. Um. Um. I gotta check everywhere. December 26th. Gore Lake Park entrance. There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe was here today. If 
feel winter still from the bare leaves trees today. There's a lot of trees here. I guess that's why they call it a nature park. It's quite pretty when the cherry trees along the lakes blossom in spring. Today, it's just cold. Hmm. The sign says, Gourd Lake Nature Park. This place is full of familiar fami families picnicking on the weekend. It's a little cold for picnicking these days, though. Um, how dare. December 26th, Gourd Lake Public Beach. I haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through the nose on a date with the lovely Keonce. Um, a famous squirrel lake. It's green water stretched out on both sides. It's a pretty big lake, really. A hot dog stand. It's closed. The Christmas fringe looks a little half-baked. The banner reads Samurai Dogs. Somebody needs to redecorate. Uh, okay. The trash can is empty. At least the place is well maintained. Yep. At least it's well maintained. A lineup of plastic benches. Guess the idea is you buy a dog and eat it here. Doubt anyone would sit here and eat on a day like this. Except maybe Maya if she has a samurai dog. Um. Uh, boat rental shop? December 26, boat rental shop. Looks like the boat rental shop is closed today, too. Uh, when is it open? Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because of the murder. Fair enough. There are some boats floating on the dock. The merge took place in a boat from the stock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. Okay. We're not finding anything. Wait. That bush. That bush. I have to examine that bush. There's more forest off that way. I doubt I'll find any helpful clues in there. Uh, Gore Lake Public Beach. Um, move. Gore Lake Woods. December 26th. Gore Lake Woods. Oh, there he is. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial today, it er... Yes? What about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really at all, all that. Though you did save Mr. Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Er, uh, thanks. What, what do you got to say? Tomorrow's trial. Detective Gumshoe, any idea what strategy Von Karma is playing for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does. And him becoming a prosecutor. And him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one. Okay, so it's connected to- it's, his phobias are all connected to the DL6 incident. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. Oh, he takes it personally that he wasn't able to save his father. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Huh? She's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trem trembling. Really? Cold as ice, Edgeworth? He was really grateful what, for what she did, you know. I'm going to head back to the station. 
I'll get the report on mine and get out of here as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering. How much is Bill going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. Alright, fair enough. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful for, for, to her for what she did. Alright, pal. Well, don't forget to pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay the, this month's rent, too. Well, I mean, if he worked for you, he probably would. I wonder why she brought a camping cooker with her. There's a convenience store right up the street. I guess she wanted to get into the outdoor spirit. Yeah, probably. I don't think Lada takes up very good care of her SUV. It's covered with dents. I can't believe anyone would drive their car down here. I mean, I might. It's it's actually in a pretty nice pop spot. There's food and some magazines on the sheet. It takes a pretty tough skin to camp in this cold. There's a sign that says no camping. Oops. Find a place to pick a pit to pick to pitch your tent. Trees go here quite thick here. Third of the back, the trees fade into the shadow where the sunlight can't reach them. Ah. Alright, what do we got here? A lot of cameras starting out, staring out at the lake as usual. Even a novice like me can tell the camera must cost a pretty penny. I hope she doesn't leave it out here to, to get stolen. I really hope not either. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything else, so... We don't have... I don't know what else we have. Uh, we gotta go... I think we gotta go back to the... To the detention center. Alright. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Alright. Hey, Nick, you finally came. They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go. Free at last, eh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I wasn't some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posed a bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. What to do? What do you think we should do next? We're kind of locking in the clues department. We could go to the park and look for Gordy. I, I was kidding. Still, if there are any clues out there, the park's as good as a bed as any. What do you say? Shall we head down there? Sure. Alright. Any ideas? Have you noticed anything lately? Hmm. You know, I did notice one thing while I was here in detention. It's really pretty comfortable in here. It's warm and they keep it very clean. I might not have you noticed anything about the case. Well, not much more than that, no. She's probably still upset about Mia. I should leave her alone. Um... Let's go to Grossberg first. Since he'll probably have something for us. Maybe. He usually has something good for us. Apparently Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Of course he is! Well, I guess I can go back tomorrow if I need anything. Oh, there's a, just a big hole where his painting used to be. Chris, Mr. Grossberg didn't get that painting back. I feel kind of bad for him. Yeah, he's not getting that painting back at all, is he? Table for clients, hmm? And I'll get everybody case, and if I'm not mistaken, that letter's made us all gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. A solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished with deep luster. Expensive-looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive-looking books. Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. It probably just sets everything up just to look nice. If I had to guess. I mean, we already... I think we already established that, but... Ah, fresh air. I gotta say, freedom feels great. Behave yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Misbehaving is much more fun. It's not going to be so much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay your bail again. Right. I'll behave. Oh, dear. What to do? Well, what should we do? I don't know. 
I've been in attention this whole time. I think I'll let you decide what we should do. Deal? Well, any thoughts you want to share? Well, I was in attention all day. I think I'd like more time to think. Poor Maya. She probably thought about me the whole time she was in there. Alright. Uh, criminal Affairs. Just make sure everything is here. I uh, just want to make sure I cover all my bases. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? He's, li he's a live wire, that one. Got in a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Ah, yeah. Probably, that's probably the idiot. Gord Lake! Go! Summer 26, Gord Lake Park entrance. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct, working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all! Hey, it's Lana! Y'all really did it today. What, what did we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbering about any old thing that came to mind. Bada. So you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? What do you mean? What do you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half have just to say I'd been a witness, even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. I'm sorry, I know I caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is tricky, vague little thing. It is. Yeah, I'm sure I know that now. I'll be fine next time I witness a murder. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder. Gordy! What about Gordy? Right. Well, the way I figure, the trial's only stoking the flames of Gorda Fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to start them. Alright, Lada, you go, girl. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit medium training first. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She doesn't need to finish that first. Lada, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That phone comer didn't want me to say nothing about it. But what information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do, do ourselves a little exchange. E exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information doesn't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey. I see you're thinking, Ma, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We got a deal or not? Wh what do we do, Nick? Shh. Couldn't hurt nothing. Sure. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. G Gordy? But, but Gordy doesn't... I, I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. Uh... Well, she's got us there. I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something? Y'all come to me first. Got it? Uh, okay. All right, see y'all later. Okay, Nick, let's get hunting. H hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay. And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist? Well, <clears throat> we could go to Gorelike Beach, I guess. Oh, they set up shop while we were gone. What's that? The, the Steel Samurai, Nick. Yo, Maya. Larry, what the heck is that? 
Oh, that's my girl Keonce Zedea. She was all, if you like, put it this here. It would be, like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with a banner. Wow. That's real impressive she could find you those. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show's finished show's finished now, so they get she got them for free. Right. Right, because but they couldn't really film the finale because the didn't the bad guy die for real? Alright, what you got? Edgeworth. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgy? Well, we may have threw the first day in court, alright? I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh. Hey, Larry, did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a big little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Probably because of the whole dad dying thing. Right. On the DL6. Yeah, exactly what like that. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. The big samurai. Hey, Larry. Where did you get that big thing? Huh? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month, yeah? It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Huh? Oh, right. The, the, com the compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's that little unit by my hot dog stand. That's why I used to put the air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. And here I thought you'd inflate it by yourself. Um. Well, let's... Wow. Gore Lake is really big. Yeah. Say, Nick, why is it called Gore Lake? Oh. Well, a long time ago, they used to grow gourds here. Whoa, no way. I was sure it was because the lake looked like a gourd button view from above. Well, it does, but, you know, like an hourglass shape. Well, it does, but it is, but it's just a coincidence. Yeah, I know, I, I've seen this cutscene before. Yeah, I pulled that deep out of my brain. I don't know what happened there. I can't get over the samurai dogs. The original samurai dogs, no less. Hey man, whoever calls their product the original first wins. Why don't you add world famous to the sign? Hey, good idea. What have I done? <laughs> oh, never change. Never change, Phoenix. Those flags look sadly out of place here. Flapping listlessly back and forth in cold wind under a cold sky. I don't know, I think it gives the place a kind of festival atmosphere. It reminds me of the War of the Eyeglasses. The War of the What? Yeah, pretty much. Huh, what? You mean you don't know the War, war of the Eyeglasses? What the heck is it? Our local fair used to do it every summer. Huh, I guess we were the only ones. I'll ask, I ask again, what the heck is it? Doesn't that seal ceremony look a little out of place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this steel samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh? Really? It looks pretty well made to me. Ugh. Still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These steel samurai fans are obviously in league of their own. What's this machine? That? That's a compressor. I use it to fill up that balloon there with air. Huh, neat. Just got it repaired yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. Hey Nick, benches. Let's take a break. Maybe have a hot dog? I think not. It's too cold to sit and eat hot dogs out here. Wimpy city boy. You should try standing under a freezing waterfall sometime. I didn't mean to do that. All right, well, we talked to Larry, so. The only thing place I can think of is the boat rental shop, which has things in it, oddly enough. Okay. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. 
Well, with the murder on the lake and all. They're probably just taking a vacation until it blows over. I get it. I get it, too. There are some boats floating at the docks. The merchant placed a boat from this dock. Apparently, the police took away any the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. Alright, I don't know why we saw that cutscene again when we've seen it before, but... Ah, uh, well, I won't question it. Probably just a coding error or something. I'm really not entirely sure how we're supposed to find proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Hey, y'all! Well, y'all find anything about out about Gordy? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at night time. It is a little chilly. I... I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, whoa. No, you don't. No sneezing. Achoo! Oh, that's right. The camera. Oops. I told you I know season. See, I set the camera to respond to things like a little softer than a bang. It trigger on one of the Von Kammer stinger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, sorry it's nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. Ah, <sighs> uh, I, I, what happened? I learned something here in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying a serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about the case anymore. Huh? Whoa, did you say you had information about the case? Tell us that, at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. What are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. A UFO? Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo, a photo this time around, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Huh? So you really are So you really are university soon. Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Right. What are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? Uh. Um. Do I have anything that would prove that... Um, uh, you know, I was wondering. Yeah? What if you get a picture of Gordy? And it turns turns out like this enlargement did. Y'all crazy? A blurry picture like this doesn't make the hit story. I need a picture that screams, I am Gordy, hear me roar. Can't turn something like, th like this into a picture, paper? What kind of fool do y'all think, think I am? The kind of fool that would turn a blurry picture as evidence into a murder trial. Not to mention claiming she saw some things she didn't see. Oh, well. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Do I go back to the entrance? Because I, I, I'm not finding anything here. No. Um, what if I go back to criminal... There it is. The Summer 26 Police Department Criminal Affairs. Okay, found it. Hey there, pal. Hi. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait. You didn't go and do something that's going to hurt Mr. Edwards' case again. What do you mean, Again. Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides, besides money, that is. Okay. How was the investigation proceeding? It's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. And the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. 
Uh, Robert Hammond. We're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I'll bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. Alright. Say, Detective Gumshoe, you know Gordy. The monster down in Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking, we're looking for it. Huh? Are you out of your minds? Eek. You got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh. Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lara. Nick, t try telling him sooner next time. Oh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. Uh huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on, now everything is in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, Missile. M missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile! Missile! Here, boy! Woof! Here he is. Hey, he's cute! Think look, cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us how? Woof! Next secret item number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Humshu, we're, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know until you try, pal. Okay, this next one's the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by your choices. Secret number, number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They're also, it seems so perfect. I can't make up my mind either, for the totally opposite reason. Oh, well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. Um... I think my odds... Uh, my camera's not plugged in. I think my odds would be best if I tried to f use Missile. Because Missile's a police dog. He'd be able to pick up traces. But... But then the metal detector might be actually be useful in actually investigating. Huh. The fishing bowl might not be. Um, I think I'll take the police dog. Can I borrow a missile? Sure thing, pal. We go to him. Woof. He's so cute. Oh, boy. Canine unit missile borrowed from Detective Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Hmm? Yeah, sure, pal. But I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. We'll take your pick. Which one will it be? Oh. Can we borrow a missile? Sure thing, pal. We go to one. All right. So we can just talk to Detective Gumshoe whenever and swap them out. Um, girl like public beach. Hey, Nick. Hmm? Missile's been acting strangely. Missile? Oh, all right. That little creature of the detectives. Hey, I love little doggies. Good boy. Good boy. Um, okay, Missile does not like Larry. Now we know that. What's wrong, Missile? Eek! Missile! Missile! W Whoa! Stop that thing! Cattle! It's eating the samurai dogs. It just ate everything. Oh, poor Larry! My samurai dogs. Wow, he ain't every single one. I'm sorry, Larry. Sorry! Sorry I don't pay the bills, Nick! Ha ha ha, it's going to have to this time. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, that didn't work. It did it. Uh, 
Okay? So missile was only really good for the one thing. <laughs> missile did nothing. Well, maybe we could try examining. Huh. I almost didn't see that signpost. Left, boat docks, right, exit. Um. Hey, Nick. What? Don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no. I was just wondering, why are camping pots and pans made of aluminum? They didn't talk about that in any of the law books. So there's no law saying they have to be made out of aluminum then. I'm not having this conversation. Okay, so this is just gonna play out again. Well, we don't have anything, so... Well, this isn't... That didn't work. Go back to the six gum shoe. Can we borrow one of the other things? Yeah, sure, pal. Okay. Let's borrow the metal detector. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. Makes a noise when metallic objects are near. A useful device. Okay. Let's go back to the lake. Um, boat rental shop, I guess. Beep. Oh, it's doing a thing. N Nick! It's beeping! The mountain sector's found something. Sure is loud enough about, about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick. Look. Huh? An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags? Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Air tank of dubious value retrieved. Oh, I know what this is. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Yeah, I... Say, is this, is this air tank yours? Why would you have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. But must be a coincidence. There's strings of flags everywhere these days. Like the elementary schools. And used car dealerships. <laughs> Look, why do I need a tank anyway? You used this to go diving in the lake, didn't you? What? Why the heck would I go diving in the lake? Wait. You. You're not. You're not saying I had something to do with the murder. No, no, not at all. Hey, you watch it, buddy. I'm not saying anything until my lawyer gets here. Larry, Nick is your lawyer. Well, Larry, she's right. Ugh. Anyway, i never seen that air tank, okay? Yeah, right. 
Larry is hiding something. I can tell. What? An air tank? Larry? Have you seen it before? Have you seen this tank before? Huh? Me? N no, never. The heck would go diving in the middle of the winter. There's something about the way his eyes twitched when I showed him the tank. I think I better pursue this line of questioning a little further. Um... Okay. Alright. To inflate something. You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Uh, inflate what? What else? The big puffy steel samurai. No, why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always used was on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it just once, and uh, it didn't go so well, as I suspected. Let's more about the tank. It didn't go so well? Er, uh, yeah. Do you think you could be a little more specific? C come on! Look, it's embarrassing, so I really didn't want to talk about it. Tell us! Tell us! Fine. Whatever. It's like I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the seal samurai up with that. And then... Blam. The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that, and that tank took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off in the Gourd Lake? It sure scared the me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Huh. Well, I don't think I'm going to get any more information out of that. See, I tried to use this tank to fill up. The, it was attaching the tank when it happened. The valve just busted open and the whole thing took off. I wish I could have seen it. Me too. Huh. I wonder if... Well... Well, I don't... I can't figure out anything. Let's see what happens when I show her the air tank. Oh. I didn't know I could flip and show everything. Ah, uh, let's see. Yep, I'd have to say I know exactly squat about that. It's painfully easy to know when something doesn't catch Law's interest. Alright, never mind. I thought I had it all. I thought I had something. Alright, so... Let's try talking... Where, where is he? He doesn't seem to be here. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe isn't here. Now that you mention it, didn't you say you had the meeting to go to? Ah, uh, that's right. Let's come back later. Oh, there's something at the detention center, that's why. Looks like Edgeworth is in questioning. Let's go back later. Or so. Um. Hmm. So, in other words, we're looking for a valve, then. Wait a minute. I just thought something.
Watch camera staring out of the frame as usual, even almost like me. Alright. The sign says no camping. Find a place to pick a check. Wait, what if the sign said no saying signs on fire? I don't think they have signs like that. Ow. What happened? Um. Okay. Well, I don't know what I would do. Do I examine the Steel Samurai? Um, what do I talk to Larry? Can I talk to Larry about it? The flying air tank. There we go. Um, so the tank and the steel ceremony you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th? A week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Chianti gave me that steel samurai, after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way, way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But, you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery, at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Alright, we figured out that Gordy is, in fact, not Gordy. Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all needed. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Gordy doesn't exist. Lana, there is no such thing as Gordy. W what? How can y'all be so sure? R really, Nick? Y'all got some proof Gordy don't exist? The proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Is here. Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge wouldn't make a claim without the proof to back it up. Here's the proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Uh... This air tank. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the air. Apparently, it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time... A couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo... Wait. So, you're saying that Gordy is really the Steel Samurai? Or at least an inflatable of him. Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dream. I'm sorry, Lada. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lada. So, tell us this information you have. Promise is a promise, I guess. I ever heard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental shop place up the path before here. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lada. We will. Let's go get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well, yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. 
I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might be help not be helpful at all, but yeah, take it. So it was an empty lake. Okay. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. <laughs> <laughs> the legend still lives on, I guess. But legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry, familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. <laughs> all right. What do we got in the court records? What's the other one look like? I should check. Can I actually check it? I can check this one. All right. Boat rental shop, I guess. We gotta talk to the guy at the boat rental shop anyway. So, boat rental shop, we, here we are. Hey, Nick. This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. There doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Anybody home? Anybody at all? Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone's around. Probably closed because of the murder. Yeah, I bet. Hmm. Um, okay. Well, there's nothing here. Oh, there's the caretaker shack. Ah. Found it. Meg, that you? Eek! Hey, is that Keith with you? He's, uh, he's senile. Okay. Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg? Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? M my mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone? Pasta. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Y you'll make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? So he thinks that he's... So he thinks he runs a pasta shop and that were his kids. Okay, par for the course already. Polly, the kids are home. Hello, hello. N Nick, what was that? A parrot. The one on that pen perch. Keith! Y yes I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. N Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's really it, Polly. Ow! Hello! <laughs> yep. <sighs> and he fell asleep standing up. Perfect. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Well, looks like he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murders? Oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. The fishing pole looks expensive. Wow, he has a television in here, too. Wow, there's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Wow, what an amazing parrot this is. Good morning. Hello? It ignored me. Hmm. 
What? You forgot Meg? You gotta call her from name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello? Hello? <coughs> See? Neat, so the parrot's name is Polly. Parrot, the erstwhile companion of the boat shop caretaker. Answers to the name Polly. Okay. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Polly! Polly! What's your name? Polly! Squawk! Hehe, <laughs> cute. May it might found a new friend. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny, he doesn't look like the type to keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Or at least he thinks he does. He thinks he's running a pasta shop at the very least. Pasta render shop. Um, a pasta shop. Yep, to think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know, so that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Y yes? Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. D dough tossing? You two, Keith. Yes? You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. A pasta wrangler? The West isn't pasta from Italy. Meg? Yes? You know the best pasta has always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? R right, of course, everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep this up, this, up this, in the, all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. There. Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? Yes, use the Palace of Pasta, the White Noodle. Oh, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days. Darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is a witness tomorrow, right? We gotta find some way to get information out of him. Polly. No. Ah, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything? Important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number of the safe? One, two, two, eight. Squat! All right. Hey, hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? Heh <laughs> heh. See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, right. <laughs> cute. Well, I don't, I really don't know what we're supposed to do here. Uh, that That's a lawyer's bet. Oh, he rocked into a badge. Y yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Uh, yep, I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. I'll be figuring it. N Nick? That's a chance to clear things up. Um, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here to investigate a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Hmm. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister? Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. I mean, I don't think it'll matter either way. Okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. But wait, didn't I just say... You too, Meg. Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know that? Now, what was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. Wah. Uh... Now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? P 
Polly, here's my only friend in the world. Isn't that right, Polly? Hello, hello. Wah. Yep. He fell asleep. And he's and he wakes up again. Um, how do I get him to talk to me now? He's falling asleep. Stop falling asleep. Won't be needing that bad, so we're in a pasta shop. Pass it. Um, I think I'll hold on if, it, if you don't mind. Oh, yep, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith? Yes? It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad? You know about this, something about this? Yep, the other night. Out in the lake. Yes, yes? I know about that. I've seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose, since you're taking over the shop and all. What you saw. What do you see? I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Uh, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. I heard another one. Bang! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was mutting something to himself. Uh, yep. What did he say? Uh, yep. I forgot. Well, that's helpful. I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. We need to know earlier than that. You, you know what? Eh? Hey, little Terry was just here. Terry? Uh, yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing on his face. He wants to be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow, I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait. I have one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Wah. Don't forget the L6. Uh-huh. What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget the L6. Wah. What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I, I mean, dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? He was involved in the DL6 incident, it seems. Why would that bird probably know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Um. Yeah, we're gonna need to go talk to. We're gonna need to go talk to Gum to Gumshoe. All right, see what he's got to say. That's weird, though. The bird knows about the L six. That's that's weird. Hey, pal. Long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we want to ask you something. Yeah. The boat caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is, appear is appearing and I was a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh. How'd you... Hmm. That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, detective? Hmm. He, actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why he, we called Mr. Ms. Law Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Huh. Sounds suspicious. It is. Hmm. What about the DL6 incident? Sister Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. 
so. Well, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, but pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. We're going to have to talk to Edgeworth, aren't we? No. What if we present? What's that? A parrot? The old man in the boat rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? The old six. W what? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget the L6. Huh? Yes, yeah. I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would the old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be... Hmm. I getcha. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Though there is the station's record room... I'll give you a special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright. Way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick. To the records room. I guess it's time to face Edgeworth past. Alright, can we move to the records room? Yes. Records room. Go! What's going on in, deck in the old record room? Wow. It's amazing. Lee Dusty. <laughs> okay. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like, summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2, at 2 o'clock p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all the lights went out. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. That would be scary like, like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? Yeah. He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Which me So Miles was in the in the courtroom at the time. He was trapped in the elevator but couldn't do anything about it because he passed out. Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here. Found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day the case in he had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet, the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Ha! Huh. Sounds like just the just like the current case. What's going on here? Guy day on the suspect in there? Hmm. That would be the guy that my mom got arrest got arrested. Hold on. This is it. The man arrested as a suspect in the deal deal six was uh was Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, 
They have to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond. The victim in our case? The victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived. So much so that they had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm. Where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in Deal 6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing has on Edward. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. Y you're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Deal 6 case file added to the court record. Okay. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find in here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Um, I don't know, but we'll see you next time. Alright, I'm gonna have to... I don't know. But that was crazy. So... I have a feeling the old man is the guy who shot Edgeworth's dad, but because of the oxygen deprivation, he lost all memory of the event, which is why he asked his parrot, don't forget DL6. Which mean, which would make the man, the man, Yo Mr. Yogi, right? That's what I'm starting, that's what I'm come to understand. That's the only way this makes sense. The old man would have to be Mr. Yogi. Um, the old man would have to have been Yogi. And he was found innocent, but he would, but he would have lost all memories of that point. So he, uh, and then he would have asked his parrot to remember DL6 for him. That's the only way that makes sense to me in my brain. So, I'm assuming that's what it is. But in any case... But in any case, we got... It's the final day of the trial. So we'll see how it goes then. But for right now, I think I am going to leave this episode here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also, check out my Patreon description below as well if you want to help support the show. It's only a couple bucks a month, and it really helps me out, so I would definitely appreciate it if you did that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!